Hello and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 3. Uh, this will be a step back in time for me. Uh, this is the game that I cut my teeth on. Uh, in terms of, it really turned me from a Civ player to a fanatical fan of Civilization. Um, I played Civ before Civ 3. Uh, casually, Civ 2 was something I played a lot, but this is the game that I actually bought, bought with my own money. Uh, you'll actually see that there's a lot of black space here, is because I'm playing this natively uh, on my PC, 2016 PC. Uh, uh, so it's in full HD, but this is the old screen. It just gives you the difference between how much rendering technology has progressed. And this game is full 2D, actually, so... This, this was the screen I was looking at back in the day, and compared to the extra, all the extra uh, real estate that I have. So, I'm going to play America. Um, I've always played America um, in my very first Civ game, historically, but because this is kind of a precedent going back to an older Civ, uh, I'm going to stick to America. Uh, 16 or 15 other AI Civs on a huge map. Uh, this is the settings that I've usually played in the past. Regent is the difficulty. Um, I think I was more comfortable playing around Monarch and Emperor uh, back in the day, but we're back to Regent because I just this is basically the fair level of play, and these are for masochists. Um, some people are really good; they're like total bean counters. I'll talk about some of the mechanics later on, but um, there's reasons why people can actually beat this game. On and there are some exploits too that are that were never fixed, but we'll, we'll get there. And I probably won't do the exploits. Um, so, Lincoln, your people are expansionist and industrious, okay. So the first thing you'll notice here is the tiles are squares and not hexagons. So there's actually fewer sides to the tiles. And the hexagon in Civ 5 is actually a, an innovation uh, in, in, in Civ. And you can also see that the units are all stacked. I can right click and I see all the units. So this game has stacking units, has um, uh, square tiles, and it's really almost archaic. It's almost like going back in time. Yeah, it is going back in time to a long time ago. Uh, we'll keep it Washington. Oh, we got a new t attack. That's great. Okay, so... Okay, all the mouse clicks are different, so I'm having have to relearn this. Okay, I'm gonna move him here. And uh, the Americans are industrious and uh, expansionist, so we get a free scout. We I think get better goody hut goody hut bonuses like that free tech we just got. And industrious means that we get an extra shield at the start at our starting location in the central tile. Um, again, you can see here this is the UI. Uh, the UI uh, sides of that old game. So this is the old screen that most people would be looking at back in the day, but there's all these black space. But when I jump over to the map view, actually the map view, you won't be apparent yet, but you can see here I can move the screen around. It actually, uh, later on when I have the full screen exposed, I should be able to see the whole map in, in much larger detail. It should be pretty awesome because I would never have been able to see that much real estate back in the past. I would be limited to this, this square box here. And this is the big difference between pre-HD, pre-16 um, by 9 uh, formats and today. So, And I mean, I, I'm saying 2016 PC, but actually this PC is pretty old. I mean, I'm running on an older i7. Oh, I made a big mistake already. I forgot to turn my science down to zero, but let's uh, and do my first research. So I've actually lost a turn of research already, because you're supposed to all do all these things uh, to set up your game. Okay, okay let's uh, go back to big picture. Um, not the way I want. I think. Yeah, all the techs are. I'm just not used to all these long tech times. I think I get a free tech here. So let's go there. Um, and because it takes so many turns to research, it doesn't make any sense to... Uh... Yeah, this is a problem with uh, old newer windows, that there's all this purple. 
uh, it's something to do with the way things are aligned, but this is actually supposed to be black text. But anyways, because it takes so long to research the tech alphabet, it doesn't really matter if I turn my signs down to 50 or, well, 10%. So this is already an exploit. You can see here that some people can get basically the same research amount of time doing 20% science versus when we were doing 50, 60. Even if we do it 100% science, we're still getting 50 turns on the alphabet. So these sliders, uh, a lot of people were quite sour about them going away in Civ 5, and they probably won't come back in Civ 6, but uh, it's, it's little things like this that people really enjoyed. They're running the empire, uh, like, you know, setting how much happiness you want to contribute, how much of your... Because they saw this as your total income, right? And so you can give some of it towards science, some of it towards happiness. And by taking that away in Civ 5, they felt like they have less control over the Empire. For me, it doesn't really matter. I think it, if Civ 5 is a totally different kind of game, and Civ 3 was a different kind of game. So, so we're going to mine the... Uh, the, these little dots are grasslands with an extra shield. Uh, these ones without the dot, we will irrigate. So we will min max right away. So this is something new, it, it, um, something that people did a lot of in Civ 3 is min max everything. So you want to maximize your shield output. So the tiles with shields, you can see this little resource here. We will also uh, do uh, mine on that one. So do that. And we have our luxury. So Civ, Civ 3 was quite uh, innovative in its time. So the first thing you see here is this border. That's the first Civ game to introduce a border. So in Civ 2 you'll just have cities uh, laid out in front of you and you can just cut through your enemy cities between the cities, walk through them. There were no borders. Uh, yeah, so Civ 3 was the first to introduce borders, and they were also the first to introduce luxuries to the game. Okay, let's see here. What do we do here? I wonder if I should make a new, another uh, scout. I'm not... Yeah, that's the thing with, with Civ 3 is I never really uh, got a sense of how powerful the scouts were, because for one thing, I never played at the highest difficulty level in Civ 3. This was 10 years ago when I was playing hardcore. And I never really understood um, all the intricacies, the ins and outs of, of the game. So, let me do a few settings here. Preferences. I think I want to keep the things animated for now, just to show people what it looks like. Um, and in this game, um, you actually get a... Um, a garrison bonus. So if you have units in your cities, your population's happier because it, it's an older mechanic back from back in the day when uh, the thought is if you have units in your city, you coerce your citizens to be happier. So I remember my very first city, uh, my very first Civ game. Uh, after a few turns, I saw there were smoke coming out of my city, so I thought they were burning incense or something, but actually they were rioting. It was that funny. Uh, so this is a long time. And this grid here is uh, is just a guide. I can turn it off for visuals, but I'll leave it on so it's easier for me to see where to move the units. Okay. And you can see here the cultural expansion is set. So you start out with a square and then you add little wings and then later on you'll add another wing. So it's not like Civ 5 where you grab tile by tile your culture, so it's a little bit different, but this is the very first implementation of culture in Civ. Um, there are other, a lot of other innovations I'll talk about as I go along. Just exploring here. One thing with Civ 3 was I would Always, I would start a lot of games uh, back in the day, and then I would quit the games because I didn't like the starts as much, or I would reroll, and 
It's something I've been trying to get myself not to do. Uh, and I haven't done it for many years. Oh, another attack. Great. Um, and that's because you, you artificially make the game easier if you roll, keep re-rolling your game. Another luxury, grapes, or wines. There should be barbarian camps. Oh, we got another unit. I see there's two volcanoes here. I know that in Civ 3 Conquest they can sometimes erupt and destroy your city, so I'm, I'll remind myself not to settle any cities right next to these volcanoes. Another Civ. Let's talk to them. Zulus? They are polite. Goodbye. One thing you'll notice here, the map is huge compared to Civ 5. Um, this is something to do with uh, this uh, with the technology. Um, by the time Civ 3 was made, um, doing a game like this was quite mature, uh, so they had uh, a lot more resources uh, that they could throw at a game like Civ. I, I would assume that eventually a game like Civ 5 would be able to have a map this size. It just takes um, the technology to get there. Oh, we got a free city. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Upgrade instructions. So we want to build a Greco-Roman. Yeah, let's go with a Greco-Roman. What's this one? Made of Bracken. Okay, let's go Greco-Roman. Let's go with this facade. Yeah, so this is a carryover from Civ 2, I think, and maybe Civ 1. I never really played Civ 1 very much, where you can build your own palace. It's it's a very Oh, I think in Civ 2 you build your own throne room, but you can see here, here's your throne room. In Civ 3 it was about uh, building your own palace, so it's a different... I can see here, there's green here, so that has to be the Greeks or something. We'll see. We might have to go into an early war. Persia. Oh, I guess we could do this also. So we have more techs than them. Um, they're annoyed with us already because they probably didn't want to see us so close, but. Oh, let's go back to them. Um, first thing you'll notice is this table here. It's very familiar, probably from Civ 5. Um, this is the first implementation of that trade table uh, as well. In Civ, trades used to be a lot more primitive before this. Hittite, smart, most advanced. Well, where do we sit? We're kind of in the middle. Okay. We got most of our text just from <laughs> popping goodie huts anyway, so gonna keep sending. Okay, so I wanna see if I can change production here to a temple, okay.
one thing with, with Civ 3 is, uh, because the happiness is local by city, it just pays to build as many cities as you can early on, because there's still penalty to the number of cities you have. I mean, there's corruption, which is a mechanic that you'll see. Basically, the cities that are further away from your capital are more corrupt, but really, it, it doesn't hurt. Even a city with one production and 90% corruption is still producing something and giving you tax dollars. Um, and it costs you nothing to maintain. Well, it, it, the buildings cost something to maintain, but uh, the population is paying for a lot of that. So you're, it's, you're still basically net, net, net positive. Which is uh, so. I'm a little bit hemmed in right now. I can see here I'm between the Zulus and the Persians, and I probably have to declare war on one of them eventually. Okay. Um, let's. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going here. I think river tiles give more food. So this is one. Two food, one gold. And this is already terrain of vote. Already two food and one gold with no, without irrigation. Okay. Uh, this soundtrack is quite iconic to me. It's a lot of good memories with this soundtrack. Only gold for that one, no tech. Okay, let's irrigate that. And you can see here in this game, every single tile you you uh, have, you actually put roads and stuff on it. Yes, let's build a barracks. Uh, so you end up with like a spaghetti kind of look to your cities. Oh, I should say that. Which is something they've been slowly trying to get away from with Civ 5. And even Civ 4 a little bit, but mostly Civ 5. Is to go for a more realistic look. That, you know, you, you know it's not. Your roads would be in the cities. The, the roads between your cities should be just one, a few roads leading in and out of your cities. It shouldn't be like this mess of, uh, uh, of noodles. But again, this is 2001 when this game first came out, so it's different, different metrics entirely. More gold, no more texts. Washington. Let's build a granary and I'm going to start pumping out some settlers. Oh, another sieve. It's a crowded game. Okay. The barbarians do more or less the same thing. And you can see here, actually, I need to defend my cities. Um, I can't leave them undefended like in Civ 5. happiness in my city because I probably need to turn one of them into an entertainer. Okay. See that smoke there? I thought at one point I thought that was people uh, burning incense. 
need to get this luxury. Oh yeah, you can actually step into their borders. Uh, they usually can't stop you, but they'll just get mad at you for doing that. I'm gonna send this guy over here to start uh, working on the roads. We apologize. Fine, okay, so well, I remember one thing I have to do in Civ 3 was to constantly check my diplomatic screen and see if there's any trades that come up turn to turn. And that's the only way I can get a good deal out of every, anything. Because sometimes you can find something one of the other subs don't have. Oh, they're caught up on technology, so they have nothing to give us that we don't want to quit. Uh, Babylon. We have technologies, they have nothing. Uh, they have two cities, we have two cities. Hold out to our attack, but uh, I'm not happy about the Zulus having caught up to us technologically. I don't remember if building um, building a settler or worker reduces population. I think it does. Archers were really powerful in Civ 5, uh, if you've seen my Let's Plays, but in this game they're not as powerful because uh, the, the, until the artillery again, which is powerful in this game, as in Civ 5 came out. Oh, we finally can build our thing. Okay, let's build a uh, worker. I think we will lose a population point. Well, at least we can bring in our. Uh, we can bring in the luxuries. So. Let's zoom out. Oh, shoot. Okay. If I zoom out, we have a good view of our surroundings. So. I'm gonna keep exploring here. I'm probably gonna build another something to explore down here. Uh, are sugars luxuries? I don't think they're luxuries. Yeah, we lose a population point uh, when we build a worker. Right, I have to keep constantly check the AI because sometimes they have workers in their capitals and we can buy it from them for gold. And I haven't been doing a good job of checking that. Nothing. I think there's a better Diplo screen I can access than that one. That's an F9. I like the, the one of the things that this game did a lot better than Civ 5 is just all the charts. Uh, I like this, the demographics, it looks really nice. Um, that's the spaceship one, that's your palace view. Uh, these are all the uh, score, so these are all the charts. So these are the power charts, it shows you the relative power my Civ have versus the other one. So I'm, I had a good start and then I'm losing power here, you can see there. That's my culture. So it's it's a lot more instructive. I kind of wish they would bring back uh, something like this in Civ 6. 
because it gives you a really good idea of your progress. Should we just get a settler all the way there? Okay, gotta move him back. You can see here how quickly the uh, game moves in terms of expansion. Um, and I think I'm expanding quite slow by comparison. Okay, we're gonna build another scout. They keep wanting us to build a pyramid. Working on, uh, there we go, there's a dip little screen. Close the deal, nothing. Close the deal. We have four, three cities to, three cities in addition to their capital, who are two. Yeah, we're falling behind in cities, so I'm gonna start, uh, oh, wrong unit. Good, we got attack. Okay, now there. See, I wanted to settle here, but the uh, Zulus took it, and I have not, have not decided yet who I want to attack next or first. Oh, no, no, no! I don't know what the worker was doing there. That's weird. That was just a glitch there. Okay, okay no, no, no! Stop, stop, stop! What the hell is the worker doing? Yeah, so explorers in Civ 3 are non combatants and they can be captured by the AI. Oh, like that. That was stupid. Okay, if we get back here. Okay. 
And when your city... No, oh, I shouldn't be moving this south. When your city is in disorder, they're not building anything. So... I don't know why there's this little lag every time I win a battle, but it has something to do with the game. Uh, so... He will move down here. But I'm gonna let it keep going doing that because I'm about to connect my luxury uh, to my capital. But all your luxuries flow through your network, your trade network, so your other cities should be connected to your capital. Otherwise, they don't get the benefits of the luxury. Okay, move up. I'm gonna settle this guy by the dives up here. And then I'm gonna build another settler to fill in my empire here. Things are moving quite fast now. So I have to attack someone because I'm kind of running out of space. You can see here the Persians are expanding and the Zulus are expanding this way. I only have one way to expand, which is up, and there's not a lot of territory that's great there. So... Okay, New York is unhappy. Let's do this for now. Moving this down. I'm just not used to the, the, the fragile nature of these units. Uh, this is a completely different game from, you know, the game I'm used to, which is... Uh, Civ 5, which I've played for the last six years or so. Yeah, we'll complete a word. They're happy now. Okay. Which... And I keep saying to myself, I should check the diplomatic screen. So let's check the diplomatic screen. Oh, they have a technology. Iron working. That's good. They trade us. Oh, they will not accept it. And in here, your advisor will tell you if it accept if he will accept it. But you have to kind of put a deal together. So you have to kind of do things like this. Some and see if this tooltip changes. It won't actually suggest to you uh, per turn. Let's try per turn. How many per turn? Two. No, they don't want per turn. I bought some 35. Okay, so. Yeah, so this was quite innovative for its time because it actually created uh, a situation where you can actually put deals together uh, for the AI to accept or reject. Okay. Let's uh, go back to them in a bit and see what else we can get. They have no technology. Usually, if you're trading away a technology, you want uh, you want the other civs to all, you want to trade it with the, to the other civs as well because uh, if you don't do it, the civ that you traded the tech to will trade it to the other civs. Um, so let's trade pottery away. They have any per turn income yet. Okay, so Shaka. Okay, how about five gold?
there's iron there, so I want to build there. There's iron there. I just need one resource of iron. That's the other thing with Civ 3 is you really only need one copy of a resource. You don't. There's, it's not limited by the number of you, uh, resources you have, like in Civ 5. out moving my guy here. Oh, I've been building a pyramid by mistake. I didn't mean to. Uh, let's pop up pop, pop the cellar. They must have buffed the industrious uh, trait or the expansions trait because I don't remember getting so many texts so early. <laughs> Unless I'm super lucky this game. was a mistake. Uh, I think there's a setting I can do preferences. Always wait to end turn. I didn't mean to end that turn, but because I had fortified my warrior, the game thought that I was done. And in this game, you, when you lose your uh, civilian units, they're gone. You can't recapture them. So we're gonna build a new city here. Okay. That was a well. That was a waste of a unit. I want to build another city here. And you can see here in Civ 3, you build as many cities as you can fit, possibly fit into your map. It's really a city spam game more so than a, uh, okay. 
Yeah, more so than any other kind of game, it was all about spamming as many cities as you can and in, in fit into a map. So I may be able to fit in more cities than I initially thought. This is a... Uh, the Zulu city is very tempting. idea where uh, everything is now with the Persians. I want to send one of these warriors to explore. And in this game, uh, wars are slightly different, they're not as onerous. Uh, the AI doesn't quite remember things the way you would imagine they would remember it. So we're going to move our units so our unit back here and we're going to settle as we wanted to. Uh, 
Although I think I made a mistake here because I had declared war while inside your territory. Technically my territory, because I was there first. Uh, <laughs> um, and so, so I think the AI is going to think I... That is one penalty that they did put in, is if you declare war in their territory, they think you're a backstabber. So that might be a big mistake on my part. some iron here. Not near enough. Iron is there. How, how long till we get a culture? 44 turns. Uh, yeah, not quickly enough. So, probably have to a mess of this game. I'm still thinking one unit per turn movement mechanism, so I should be stacking my units more, but... Oh, they have a lot of money. Okay. Let's check our diplomatic screen again. Do they want peace? No. I think you're locked in for 10 turns when you do that. Same tech as us. horseback riding instead.
I think by the time I get that settler settled and the iron hooked up, I would have uh, the borders would have expanded here. Zulus do get an early unique unit. Okay, I'm gonna screen that, make sure I don't mess that up. Send my uh,
first look in episode one of uh, Let's Play Civilization 3 America. Um, we'll see if I want to continue this episode, uh, this series, um, but I've had a lot of fun just re-remembering all the um, uh, good times I've had with this game. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>